everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am super excited to share with all of you my first impressions of the Sonia G Niji Pro brush. This is one of Sonia G's latest releases and has very frequently been sold out. So I was really excited to finally pick this up in her most recent restock. So if you're interested in learning more about the Niji Pro, then just stick around. So to start out, let's just take a moment to appreciate how beautiful this brush is. So this brush comes in her classic red lacquer handle, which is what she uses for her Pro series. The bristles are a mix of dyed and undyed Saikoho goat hair, which is the softest form of goat hair. As you can see, it has sort of a salt and pepper kind of look to it. The brush has a very pinched ferrule, so the cross section is an oval. And from the side, it's almost like a really thick fan brush. And this is the first time that Sonia G has done this black and white bristle type of look. For context, most of her other dyed goat hair brushes are dyed brown. And in general, most of her brushes are either dyed goat hair or undyed goat hair, rather than a mix of the two. So later in this video, I'll compare this with a bunch of my other Sonia G and other Fude brand brushes. But to start off, I wanted to go ahead and try this out on my face, demoing it both with bronzer and with setting powder. So to start out, I have two setting powders to try this out with. My classic Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder, and then also my Dior Backstage Powder No Powder. I picked these two because they have very different formulations. This one is very, very firmly pressed, whereas the other one is more so your classic powder. So let's start out by trying this with the Charlotte Tilbury. It's kind of a very convenient shape for this particular compact. So let me zoom you guys in, and let's try just sweeping this all over the right side of my face. Today I'm wearing the Dior Forever Glow Foundation, and I'll link in the description box all the other products that I have on my face. So this is a very, very soft brush. It feels really comfortable on the skin and is very nicely pressing the powder in. I am going in with a little bit more powder than I normally would, just so we can really see the effect of this brush. So there we have powder on this side and no powder on this side of my face. So you can see that Charlotte powder definitely mattified this side. I feel like it was really easy to just brush this in. I was using more of a pressing motion today because this is still a little bit big for my face, I think. But I think that was really quick and easy just to press the powder throughout my face. And you might be able to see that on the brush, it did pick up a little bit of foundation, which is how things go with natural hair brushes. But this side of my face is looking really nice. So I think it did pretty well overall. The only area I wasn't able to quite get is just right underneath my eyes because this brush is a little bit large for that. But other than this area, I think it's really good for just all over face powder. So I just wiped this off on a towel and now I'm gonna go in with this Dior Backstage Powder No Powder. Since this is very firmly pressed, it's usually pretty hard to pick it up, but I guess I did get a little bit on the brush. So let's see how this side goes. And of course, these two powders have very different finishes, so I'm not expecting the two sides of my face to look similar, but I just wanna see if this can also apply that really pressed powder. All right, one hair fall, fell out. Let me just take that off. It is pretty common when you first get a natural hairbrush that there'll be a little bit of bristle fallout, so I'm not too worried about that. All right, so here we have powder on both sides of my face, and I think this brush did a pretty good job with both sides, even though the formulation was quite different. I definitely did need to dig in a little bit more on the Dior side, but that's to be expected given just how firmly baked and pressed that powder is. Looking closely, I do feel like this applied a really nice even layer of powder on both sides. So overall, I think this is pretty solid as a powder brush. For my face, which is on the smaller side, it is a little bit big for that under eye area and you do need to be a little bit careful around the mouth if you already put your lip products down like I did today. Most days I would save lips for the end, so that's normally not a problem for me, 
But just one thing I wanted to know if you're kind of navigating around smaller areas of your face. Of course though, this is primarily a bronzer brush and I bought this specifically for that use case because bronzer is always the step in my makeup routine I have the hardest time with when it comes to getting a nice even blend. I find that it's really, really easy for my bronzer to look patchy. And so this seems like it would be the perfect brush for bronzer. It has that really nice shape for chiseling your cheeks out. So fingers crossed this works well. So I have four bronzers on my table right now, so let's try to run through as many of them as possible. So to start out, I'm going to go in lightly with this contour shade from Charlotte Tilbury. So this is the mini size of her Film Star Bronze and Glow. And so I'm just going to see how this applies. This should be pretty light, and indeed it is to start out. I thought I would use more of a sweeping motion with this, but I'm actually going to start just by patting it in. And I feel like this is leaving a really nice light amount. In general, this brush is a little bit more airy than what I anticipated, which is good. I think that's great for just having a light layer of powder on your face. And especially if you have a more pigmented product, I think this will really help with blendability. But of course, let's test that out today. So I'm just pouncing this all over the perimeter of my face to get some sculpt on. Okay, one more bristle fell. And one thing I should mention is I have washed this brush already. I got it in the mail yesterday, and so I washed it and left it to dry overnight. Okay, third bristle to fall. So there is some bristle fallout that I'm getting today. As I mentioned, that is to be expected the first couple times you use a new brush, but fingers crossed the fallout stops at a certain point because it's such a pretty brush. I would not want it to continue to shed. So there we go. Very, very light dusting of the Filmstar Bronze and Glow all over my cheeks. I can already tell that in comparison to my Wayne Gloss number no. 12, which is one of my current go-to brushes, this one is definitely a lot more airy in its application. So now I want to go in with more of a classic powder bronzer. So I have here my matte bronzing brick from Victoria Beckham. And I'm going to go in with the contour side because today's look is overall on the cooler side. So let's try going in here. And this is way more pigmented than the Charlotte. So let's see how this goes. This brush is definitely very good at laying down an airy layer. It really kind of feels like you are pouncing a cloud on your face, which is quite pleasant. If you want very targeted bronzer or contour, you might want to go in with a smaller brush, at least if you have a smaller face like I do. But I think this is really good for a more diffused application. Ooh, very pretty. So far, so good. I feel like this is making my bronzer application very easy. I just kind of, you know, tap into the compact and then just sort of pounce it on my face and it's very well blended very quickly, which is exactly what I like when it comes to my bronzers. So there we go, looking a lot more bronzed up. And then I also did want to try this with my Chantecai bronzer. This is a very baked formula, so let's see how this goes over here. And I'm going to concentrate this in the hollows of my cheeks because this is a little bit more of a cool toned bronzer. All right, yeah, I think that definitely picked up a good amount of that bronzer. Just dab it in on this side. Alrighty, this is really making it very easy. I really love how you can just apply this straight on, which is really nice because a lot of brushes I find you have to kind of angle it the right way in order to get a nice bronzer application. But this is very easy to use. Alrighty, I know we're going very overkill with all of these bronzers, but finally I do want to just try it with my Charlotte Airbrush Bronzer. And I'm going to just sweep this around the perimeter of my face just so we kind of cover a bunch of different formulations because I do find that oftentimes I need to use a different brush depending on which type of bronzer I'm using. And so far this has been doing pretty well with all of them. 
The only caveat I would have is it's a little bit big for the under the chin contour, but it's really, really perfect for that cheek contour and the forehead and just kind of around the face. I did just see a couple more hairs fall out of this brush though, so that's the one negative so far. It does seem like there are some hairs that are shedding. That is pretty common with Fude brushes when you first get them. So I just have to keep you guys posted in terms of how this fares over time. Hopefully after this first use, I don't see so much shedding. So setting powder and bronzer are the two tasks that this brush is advertised as being really great at. But I also wanna see how this fares with some blush. So I have here my Pat McGrath Divine Rose blush. And so let's see if this picks it up well and if I can use this to just diffuse some blush over my cheeks. All right, looking pretty good. Yeah, the shape is actually quite nice for the cheeks as well, as long as you're just kind of going in with one shade. You can sort of bring it up very easily. And again, because it's quite fluffy, I feel like you can really just add sheer layers and continue just building up the blush. Alrighty, that was very nice, very easy. The blush looks really pretty on the cheeks. Finally, I'm just gonna take a little bit of that highlight and just sweep that on the high points. This is definitely a little bit big for highlight, but I think with a really light highlight like this, it should work. And yeah, I think it's still precise enough that you can sort of concentrate the highlight on the high points. So let me zoom you guys out now. So overall, I have to say, I really like this brush upon first impression. It took me a while debating whether to get this brush because it is quite pricey at $85. And so I was debating between this and the Face Pro, which is one of Sonia G's OG brushes. And everyone seems to really love that as well for bronzer and powder. After this initial impression, I will say that I am glad that I picked up this brush because it is basically as big as I would want to go in terms of a bronzer brush. My face overall is a little bit on the small side and so I think this is really great at providing that diffused bronzer look. The Face Pro is a little bit chubbier and rounder than this one so I think that might be a little bit too big for my cheek area. Of course, I'll have to keep playing around with this to see if it really revolutionizes my bronzer game. But at least upon first impressions, this is probably the easiest to use bronzer brush I've ever tried. And as you saw today, I tried it with four very different bronzer formulas. And I also tried it with powder and it really just performed impeccably for all of those steps. The bristles are just extremely soft and silky on the skin. And the brush just provides really light, even layers of powder, which is really excellent for bronzer, since the thing I always struggle with with bronzer is having patchiness in various areas. And I had absolutely no patchiness using this today. And it was also actually really excellent for blush and for highlight as well. Again, I think what this brush does really well is just providing a nice, even application. I mean, you guys can see just how even that edge is. It's such a beautiful edge over here. And so I think when you apply that directly to the skin, all of the powder is just being applied at the right time in the right concentration. And so you don't end up with certain parts that are really concentrated and certain parts that are really light. It's just a really even application of color on the face. So now to just show you guys some quick brush comparisons. So here we have it next to the base brush from Sonia G's Lotus set. So you can see that it's a lot bigger and also a lot thicker than that. Also, while this brush is very light and airy, the base brush is much more tightly packed. So this one is really designed for creams and liquids while this one is designed for powders. And you can also see that the cross section is quite different. This one is oval, whereas this one is almost a diamond. Next, we have my current go-to bronzer brush, which is the Wayne Goss number 12. So this one is definitely a lot larger than the Wayne Goss. Also, it has more of a fan shape in comparison to the Wayne Goss, which is more of a paddle shape. They both have a similar cross section from this side. 
and they're both ovals, but the Wayne Goss is a little bit more circular. I would say if you want more targeted placement, the Wayne Goss, since it's smaller, might be slightly better. But I do find with this one, because it's a much more firmly packed brush, I need to use it more at an angle if I want that nice diffused bronzer application. Whereas for this one, you can use it straight on your face like this. So this is how I would apply it with the Wayne Goss, and this is how I would apply it with the Sonia G. Next, we have the Sonia G Cheek Pro, which is one of her workhorse brushes. You can use this for bronzer, blush, or highlight but I primarily use this guy for blush. So you can see they're in the same series, so very similar handles. The Niji Pro is way, way larger though, and is also a little bit more fluffy than the Cheek Pro, which is more densely packed. And here you can see the cross sections. The Cheek Pro is much more like a cotton ball shape, which is a slightly pinched ferrule. Next, we have the Wayne Goss Artist Large Brush. This is a totally different shape, but I also like to use this brush for bronzer. The Wayne Goss has a circular cross section in comparison to the Niji's oval cross section. And this guy is blue squirrel hair, so it's extremely soft and it's also quite fluffy. Just for size comparison, here it is next to some angled brushes that I also enjoy for bronzer. So in the middle, we have the Sonia G Detail Brush from her Lotus set, and then we have the Ruffer Number no. 4 brush. So obviously totally different shapes, but here you can see how large they are in comparison to each other. And here it is next to my Beautylish Lunar New Year brush with the little tiger emblem on it. So these are a little bit more similar in size, but very different in shape. So the Beautylish brush is overall a round ferrule just a slight pinch, whereas the Niji is very pinched. Also, this Beautylish brush is extremely fluffy. It's primarily just for powder. So the Niji is actually a little bit more densely packed. And finally, here it is next to the Refer number no. 5 and the Sonia G Buffer Pro. Again, mostly just for size comparison. These are totally different shapes, as you can also see from the cross section. So those are the main brush comparisons I could think of. If you guys have any other questions about how this compares to some other brushes, let me know in the comments down below. And if I have that brush, I'll try to let you guys know what the differences or similarities might be. Overall though, this is a pretty unique brush in my collection and I am super excited to see if this becomes my number one bronzer brush. As I already mentioned, it is looking very promising so far. And it's also just such a lovely brush to use from an experiential perspective. As you can see, it's so, so pretty. I really love how she did these bristles. It's a really unique colorway in terms of this salt and pepper look. The brush is just so soft and comfortable on the cheeks. If you have sensitive skin at all, I think you'll really like using this brush. And in my experience, usually there's a little bit of a learning curve whenever you try a new makeup brush, but this one was so easy to use that I feel like even with just using it for the first time and using it with a bunch of different products, layering on so many bronzers on my face, it did an amazing job. So I am super, super excited about this brush. Hope that she gets more in stock so it doesn't constantly sell out. But I think if you guys try this brush, you won't be disappointed. So that's it for today's video. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If you guys have tried the Niji Pro, I would love to know in the comments down below what your thoughts have been. And more broadly, I would love to hear what your favorite brushes are for setting powder and bronzer. I am always collecting new brushes, so I'd love to hear what products have worked out well for you. Thank you all so much for joining me today, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!